That is correct, Christine. One of the men charged with killing Italian McGregor is here inside the Harris County Jail. The 24-year-old mother of three was the first recorded homicide of 2022 in the city of Houston, but her family says she deserves to be remembered much more than just as a statistic. She was just trying to celebrate a new year and never came home. Italia McGregor's family and loved ones are still trying to process her senseless murder one week later as they make plans to honor her life in the next few days. The family is totally devastated. What a loss, a senseless loss. Italia's aunt, Kimberly McGregor, says what she'll miss the most is her niece's loving personality. She's really tiny and had a big spirit, a big heart, just, just great, just a great young lady. 24-year-old Italia was leaving a nightclub in southwest Houston early on the morning of New Year's Day. She was with two others, including the father of her newborn, when the group got into an argument with two men. It escalated to a fist fight when the two men pulled out guns and started shooting. The two people with Italia were wounded but survived. Italia was wounded and died at the scene. The next case we're going to consider is Gregory Allen. One of the accused shooters, 28-year-old Gregory Allen, made his first court appearance Friday after being arrested. The second suspect, seen in these surveillance photos, is being sought by officers. Italia's aunt says their arrests won't erase her family's pain, but the killer's actions also won't negate the impact her niece had on all who knew her. So I just want to thank God for bringing her here and having me to share a part of her life to be her aunt because it, that's his, he brought her here. And of course, adding to the tragedy, Italia McGregor was the mother of three young children, including a two month old. Her family plans to lay her to rest in Brenham next Saturday. Reporting live from downtown Houston, Keith Garvin, KPRC 2 News. Our hearts are with her family, Keith. Thank you. A high school teacher is in some trouble tonight after police say she put her 13 year old COVID positive son in the trunk of her car while her family got tested for the coronavirus. Sarah Beam told police her son tested positive for COVID and she didn't want to be exposed Monday. We're told a witness working in the Northeast Harris County drive through site is the one who found the 13 year old and then notified police. Investigators say Beam, a teacher in Cypress Fair Fairbanks ISD, has been placed on administrative leave. There was also a warrant out for her arrest. New at 10, the Amber Alert for a missing three-year-old in San Antonio has been discontinued, but officials say the search for Lena Sadar Kill is not over. The missing girl was last seen in San Antonio back on December 20th. She disappeared after her mother left her unattended in a playground at the family's apartment complex. There is a $150,000 reward for any information leading to Lena's location. It's been two months since the tragic events unfolded at the the Astro World Festival, and now Governor Greg Abbott is calling for change. A task force dedicated to concert safety is working to make sure that this never happens again. We're told that task force is made up of not only Texas experts, but also those from overseas. Members of that task force say a more defined alert system for first responders to be inside the venues is also being discussed. The fire EMS and police agencies that respond to the 911 calls have got to be a part of the command and control on any incident like this or any event. Those experts tell us that the Astro World Festival organizers have yet to reach out and be part of those conversations. Full recommendations could come as early as mid spring. President Joe Biden's vaccine mandate for large businesses made its way to the Supreme Court today. We're told the mostly conservative bench seemed skeptical of a vaccine mandate. The president's proposed mandate would allow employers to require workers to be vaccinated or be tested frequently. Opposing counsel of the mandate say the government doesn't have the power to mandate medical procedures. The Supreme Court is set to reconvene on Monday. The KPRC2 education team is tracking the impact that COVID is having on our school districts. There are currently 1,423 active cases reporting, reported in Houston ISD. Of those, 1,041 are students, which is about a half of a percentage point of the total population, and 382 are staff members. Katie ISD reports 1,718 active cases in the district. Of those, 1,196 
27 are students and 521 are staff members, which is about 3.5% of total staff members. There are currently 912 active cases reported in Conroe. Of those, 632 are students, 240 are staff members. You can see the respective percentages right there on your screen. Well, as we told you last night at 10 o'clock, if you're still looking for a testing site, there is a brand new one up and running in Fort Bend County. People lined up at Brazos River Park today when that site opened. The process really seemed to be running smoothly when our cameras were there. Officials in Fort Bend County said they opened this drive through mega testing site to keep up with demand. That site is open now Monday through Saturday from eight in the morning until five at night. Appointments are required and we want to help you find a testing site. So grab your smartphone. You can scan this QR code right here. It'll give you a list of COVID testing sites near you. It provides a direct link to our guide at click to Houston.com. Spring ISD has named a lone finalist to be the district's next superintendent. Dr. Lapita Hinojosa would be the first Hispanic woman to hold the position in the district's history. Spring ISD's Board of Trustees selected her for the job in a unanimous vote yesterday. Hinojosa currently holds the Chief of Innovation and Equity position and has worked in Spring ISD for several years now. As required by Texas law, there will be a 21-day waiting period before Hinojosa officially can become superintendent. She is scheduled to begin her new role on February 1st. Hollywood has lost a true icon, Academy Award winning and racial barrier breaking actor Sidney Portier has died at the age of 94. Tonight, a local actor is remembering the time that he shared with that legend as he looks back at his decades long career and he's only sharing his story tonight with our Devin Clark. He looked me in the eyes and said, young fella, I'm passing you the torch. You run with it. Houston native and local actor Stefan Davis thinks back to the day his life and career changed forever. We were at the restaurant and the, the lady, a friend of Clyde's, had said, hey, you want to meet Sidney Poitier? And I said, what? She said, you want to go talk to him? I was like, yeah. Davis says having just lost his father after a years-long battle with cancer, Portier's warm embrace brought him to tears. And I just welled up. I almost like almost fell in his arms because I that was a sign from God that you're supposed to be here. Davis says the admiration for the first black male Oscar winner is well warranted as he accomplished much more than that in his 94 years of life. From tackling racial injustice through acting. You aren't taking me anywhere, you dig? You're holding the wrong man. Representing interracial relationships on screen before it became common. We'll have the children. Otherwise, I don't know what you'd call it, but you couldn't call it a marriage. To off-screen battles as a civil rights activist and being honored with the Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama. When I got the news that he had passed, I, I, I welled up again. I just, I, I lost it. Because, I, I, you know, here it is. I watched, like I said, a childhood he was kind of like a superhero to me. Davis credits Portier with laying the foundation for other black people to have successful careers in media today. Now you see us, not only are we in front of the camera, we're behind the camera. We're showrunners now. We're creating. And to see some of Davis's creations inspired by Portier, you can head over to our website, click2houston.com, where we'll have a link to his latest project, which just also happens to deal with social justice issues. Reporting from the Theater District, Devin Clark, KPRC 2 News. Thank you, Devin. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Some Galveston residents have found a new way to put their discarded Christmas trees to use. Coming up, a closer look at the recycled evergreens. Video of a man's murder sparked outrage and protests nationwide. Now his killers have learned their punishment. The sentences they received next on KPRC 2 News at 10. This week on Texans game day. Fresh off their tough loss to the 49ers, the Texans return home to close out the season. What it will take to beat the Titans at NRG. Sunday morning at 8.30 on KPRC 2. Welcome to your comeback. Start yours today at LA Fitness. 
Fulfill your New Year's resolution of sleeping better tonight by a new Tempur-Pedic Masters of Galloway Furniture, $3,000 or better. And if the team from Alabama wins the big game Monday night, January 10th in Indiana, your purchase is free, free, free. By Tempur-Pedic Masters, $3,000 or better. If the team from Alabama wins the big game, your purchase is free. This is cellulose acetate, a plant-based material that's not only extremely durable, but also quite flexible, making it ideal for Warby Parker glasses, which, by the way, start at $95, including prescription lenses. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. Oh yeah, about those prescription lenses. Warby Parker glasses come standard with custom-cut polycarbonate lenses that have been treated with scratch-resistant and anti-reflective coatings. Nice. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. Some things can't be tried at home. Where now? With Capital One, the possibilities are unlimited. Introducing Venture X, our new class of travel card. Earn 10x miles on hotels and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges. Find your where next with Venture X. What's in your wallet? With Burlington, you can look great. Get in shape and save a ton of money without missing a beat. You'll love the deals. You'll love Burlington. Welcome to your comeback. Start yours today at LA Fitness. It's one of the most Googled topics right now. We're looking into COVID testing concerns. From hidden charges to lost test results, answers to your top questions and what to do if you think a testing site is breaking the rules. Monday morning at 6.40 on KPRC2 News Today. A judge in Georgia has now sentenced the three men convicted of killing Ahmad Arbery, a black man who was out running when he was shot. The deadly shooting drew international attention after video of the shooting was leaked, leading to arrests months later. NBC's Bree Jackson breaks down the sentencing. He left his home apparently to go for a run, and he ended up running for his life. Today, a Georgia judge sentencing father and son, Gregory and Travis McMichael, to life without the possibility of parole for the killing of 25-year-old Ahmad Aubrey. Their neighbor, William Bryan, was sentenced to life with the possibility of parole. The cell phone video of Aubrey, a black man, being chased and gunned down by three white men while he ran through a Georgia neighborhood sparked a national outcry. Nearly two years later, Aubrey's father, still haunted by the crime. Not only did they lynch my son in broad daylight, but they killed him while he was doing what he loved than anything, running. More than